Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I am very excited to be unboxing some new Grant Stones. Now, if you've been following along with my story recently, you'll know that I got three new pairs of Grant Stones on the cream colored Vibram Cavity Wedge Sole. They run three boots currently on this sole. They run the Storm Suede, the Coffee Suede, and finally I'll be unboxing and giving my thoughts on the Tan Suede. <laughs> Yeah, I went a little nuts, but again, with the stitch down discount, 10% off, plus with Grantstone, you're already getting an incredible deal. This little card from Charles F. Stead Tannery talking all about Rapello suede, which is made from carefully selected calfskins and worked using a technique which highlights its characteristic softness, rich appearance, and breathability. It has been treated in the tannage to enhance water resistance. Clean using a soft bristle brush for localized spots. Use a gum rubber eraser, being careful not to exert too much pressure, which may cause the color to fade. Full disclosure, I already opened these up and I did spray these down with some Tarago Nano Spray Suede Protector, as well as, you know, I'm a sucker for laces. I'm a stickler for laces, especially laces from my favorite lace company called Guarded Goods. So I did throw in some beautiful tan rawhide laces to complement the tan suede of these. Now, I will say when I sprayed these down with Tarago, it darkened them up just a little bit, not very much though at all. And I only did one coat because A, I didn't want to darken them up too much, and B, well, the tannery already uh, does some waterproofing on these as well. And in my talk with Phil recently from Ashland Leather, he talked about this, how this calf suede from Charles F. Stead Tannery has such a tight grain and he's right, it's not a very hairy or fuzzy suede. It's a very tight suede calfskin. Now calfskin, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated leathers in the world. It's second only to shell, I would say, in terms of its property of not stretching. I mean, my calfskin boots, none of them really stretch very much at all. It's crazy, like the way that they fit on day one, like yeah, they break in, they form some creasing, and they patinate differently compared to shell, but ultimately they, they retain such a strong tension throughout the life of the, of the article. That's what I love about it. So what is there to say about these? There's quite a lot actually. So this is the diesel boot in tan suede, currently on the Grantstone site for a mere $285. Now, like I've said before, you know, if you were to buy this makeup from another company, say, you know, something similar from Alden or something similar for Viberg, I don't have to tell you that the price is going to go up quite a bit. That's why I see like, you know, the materials with Grantstone are all the same. So you're getting the same stuff. You're getting the same Vibram sole. You're getting the same material for the uppers, the same suede that Alden would use or Viberg would use. And you're getting it at just such a hell of a price, not to mention, the components on these, Goodyear Welt Construction, Leo Last, Charles F. Stead, Calf Suede Upper, Full Green Leather Cow Lining from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's on the inside there. We've got Brass Eyelets, Vegetable Tanned Leather Insole, Welt, and Midsole, you can see here. Cork Filler with Steel Shank, Full Green Leather Heel Counters, Vibram Cavity Wedge Sole, made on Jamin Island, China. When sampling this particular wedge sole, we found it looked balanced and had a great feel. The casual silhouette offers higher contrast and softer heel. And I have to say, I haven't worn the coffee suede yet, but I have been wearing around the storm suede quite a bit. And I gotta say, they are so comfortable. They're so lightweight. They're so, it's like walking on a cloud with these cavity wedge soles. One thing that I realized with my recent resole with Cobbler Sunny is most of the weight in a boot, it's, it's sort of an illusion. But most of the weight in the boot is in the sole itself. These Vibergs on day-night sole, they feel very heavy. And you might think, oh, well, it's the laces and it's the, it's the heavy, heavily oiled, heavily conditioned chrome Excel leather as the upper. What I realized is most of the weight is in the sole. So like when I had Sunny resole my Aldens in reverse tobacco chamois, I was holding the upper, just the chamois itself. I was holding it and it was as light as a napkin. It was like... Honestly, it was kind of disappointing how lightweight it was because, you know, when you pick up a boot and it's heavy, it's like, whoa, this feels so robust, so manly, so heavy, such tough components, right? And the components are tough, don't get me wrong. And lightweight doesn't mean weak, you know? Um, so I'm not trying to say that. What I am saying though is in most service boots, 
the reason they feel heavy is because of that heavy sole. You got the rubber, you got the steel shank in there, you got the cork filler, you got the midsole, the insole, the outsole, all that stuff. That's what actually gives the boot its the majority of its weight. That's why each boot weighs like, you know, a couple pounds. It's because of the sole. When you take the sole out of the equation, the upper itself and the hardware on the top comes to a couple ounces probably. So it was it was actually kind of underwhelming when I felt the upper of the reverse tobacco chamois boot in my hand i'm like oh my god this thing is so lightweight it's very it was very underwhelming you know in a certain way so this sole i don't believe has a steel shank i believe it's just full grain leather midsole and then this high density foam virum cavity wedge outsole and this thing is light it's like pencil eraser light probably even lighter than a pencil eraser um it's still very durable and yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible material. Is it ideal for walking around all day on? I don't know. What I'm finding is I, I like more leather between my foot and the ground because I think leather honestly probably does give the most support, the most support overall to your foot. But that's not to say that, you know, these, these still offer a very high level of support. So don't get me wrong, these are still very supportive. But long story short, if I had to stand up for, say, 5, 8, 10 hours a day, I'd want to stand on leather soles. If I was sitting, standing, sitting, standing, doing mostly sitting throughout the day and walking periodically, then these are totally fine. So let me give you a little backstory into how I ended up acquiring these. So Grant Stone posted a post of these three weeks ago. They said, if you're looking for a soft, forgiving boot, look no further. Calf suede upper and a Vibram wedge sole. And yeah, I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh God, those look so attractive. <laughs> Let's see, Harrison486, who I talk to all the time, he said he's already ordered his pair. And then I said, I'm trying not to buy these, but you guys are making it hard. Grant Stone didn't make it any easier on me. They said, thanks, Dale. <laughs> and then Klopp MP came back to my comment and he said, the best way to beat the temptation is to yield to it. Damn it. He got me. He's correct. The best way to <laughs> to beat that temptation is to yield. And yield I did. <laughs> so, Adding to my overall allure of these boots in tan suede was the fact that Grant Stone did several iterations in tan suede. They did some pre-orders. They did one tan suede. It was an Edward boot in tan suede on a crepe sole. They said, we wanted to mix things up a bit. Using a natural crepe sole on this Edward boot pre-order, the crepe sole is a fantastic match with a suede upper due to the forgiveness of the two. This is one of the few Goodyear welt boot combinations that offers a supple feel from the first wear. The Edward boot has larger quarters and slightly different details, such as smaller hardware and an extra eyelet creating a dressier feel than the diesel. February 21 delivery. Goodyear Welt, Leo Last, Calf Suede, Full Grain Leather Kift Lining, Vegetable Tan Leather Insole Welt and Midsole, Natural Crepe Outsole. So that's the main difference on that one. So yeah, there, there were a couple other ones. So they did a different, they did a diesel boot in tan suede with a micro rubber stud outsole. Yeah, micro rubber stud sole. So they did that one, very sharp. And then they did Finally, my favorite, the tassel loafer in tan suede. Just kidding, I am not a loafer man, but if I were a loafer man, I would have been all over those. <laughs> Very sharp, tan suede tassel loafer. All right, and so if some of you might be very familiar with my boot collection, then you'll know that probably another reason I hesitated on getting these was because I have some Mark Alberts in Coyote Rough Out in nearly the same aesthetic. <laughs> so here we've got Grant Stone diesel boots on the Vibram Cavity Wedge Sole up against some Mark Albert plain toe boots also on a, a Vibram Cream Wedge Sole. It's a, still a wedge sole but it's, it's a different shape and model compared to the ones that the Grant Stones are built on. These are obviously very similar boots right here. I mean, the colorway is very similar. The texture is obviously quite different. 
the Coyote Rough Out, obviously it's got a very hairy, rough out texture nap happening, whereas the Grant Stones, they have a more of a tight grain happening with the suede. So, but in my mind, there's not too big of a difference between a rough out and a suede. The rough out has, like I said, more texture, more hairiness to it. So why did I get the Grant Stones when I already had the Mark Alberts? Well, first off, this was my first pair of Mark Alberts, and I had these in the D-width, and when I do wear them with thick socks, the vamp in the front sort of crushes my toes just a little bit. They're, they're just sort of constricted in there. That's why my subsequent Mark Alberts have all been in an E-width. But also, these Mark Albert, Alberts, I want to say, are a little bit shorter in length compared to the Grant Stones. I think the Grant Stones are just a little bit longer, and uh, it's just a little bit more comfortable for my foot. Um, another reason why I got the Grant Stones was because these Mark Alberts have actually been promoted to work boot status. So last summer when I was installing my patio and when I was helping my friends install their patio, I actually wore these Mark Alberts as my work boots. Now, I know it's it might seem strange to a lot of boot lovers out there to use such a light colored boot as a work boot, but there's a reason why, like in my recent talk with Phil, we talked about the Marine Field Shoe. And what they did was they took, what goes into a Marine Field Shoe is they take natural chrome Excel and they flip it so that the rough out is facing outside because when you get a lot of sand when you're hiking through like a lot of sand the sand gets in your shoe it gets in your boot and it's actually easier to just dump the sand out if the interior if the inside of the boot the interior is smooth if it were rough out on the inside the sand would stay stuck inside the the texture and the hair of the rough out so sand has a much better chance of becoming embedded into rough out leather rough out actually makes a an absolutely fantastic work boot leather reason for that it's very breathable it's very lightweight and it is very very tough it does not take on marks very easily for example like these were coated in concrete and these were just i mean I've, i had acid spilled on them like paint remover here <laughs> spilled on this <laughs> and you can still see it it sort of left a mark but not really yeah and it's still got a lot of debris in it i, I should probably get to uh cleaning these off i put these through the ringer and they perform just amazingly as work boots and yet even when you look at like marine corps desert uniforms they have a very similar leather if not the same leather the Coyote Rough Out. It's an incredibly hard wearing leather. I would say don't let that light appearance of the leather deter you. Not only do these not take on markings or stains very easily, they don't hardly crease, they don't stretch at all, but they're very breathable and they're very tough. So that's why I think Coyote Rough Out is just an outstanding leather for hard wearing activities, putting them through very hard work, very hard exposure. They hold up. It's an incredibly resilient leather. So don't let the appearance fool you. It's an incredibly resilient leather. So anyways, since I'm not wearing these boots with my day-to-day -day casual wear anymore, like I said, they were promoted to work boot status, I now have these Grant Stones to wear because if I want this, a similar aesthetic but I want to wear it casually, then I'm going to go for the Grant Stones. You know, they're brand new. I just think that the, the aesthetic will, will go better for casual slash dressy wear, whereas these, these are now forever work boots. <laughs> They're fantastic. I can wear them with lightweight cotton socks and get a lot of good yard work done, a lot of good construction done around the house, or if I need to help my friends or something like that with a house project, I'll throw those on and they're just amazing. I also have some tan suede, similar to the Grant Stone Dirty Buck. I have something very similar from J. Crew, as well as I have some tan suede short wing bluchers from J. Crew as well in tan suede. I'll show some pictures of them next to each other. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to give my thoughts on this new pickup. I think with the stitch down 10% off discount, it brought these boots down to like $250. Now, come on, that is an insane deal for something for what you're getting here. And yeah, I really think that Grantstone does a very good job at filling out your closet with staples. They don't do stuff that's so crazy. Most of their styles are just very conservative, very classic. They, they really can fit the fundamental needs of your wardrobe, of your boots and your shoe wardrobe, I would say. You know, they don't get too wild. They did do the ostrich diesel boot, which was sold out just recently. So 
that's probably the wildest leather that they've run. But outside of that, like, I would say, like, whenever Grant Stone releases something, I think really, you know, you should consider them because not only the price, but not just the price, but where, where it would fit into your wardrobe. You know what I mean? Like, these are timeless looks. These are comfortable, you know, once you nail your size with Grant Stone, they're comfortable, they're timeless. All right, and now for the final segment that I promised I would start doing, though I often forget, so I have to refilm it like I'm doing now. Um, <laughs> but for the final portion of every new boot video that I'm gonna be doing, I'm going to do a segment where I talk about the belts that I intend to pair with the boots. So today we've got, first up, this is my new pigeon tree crafting belt in a brilliant natural vegetable tanned leather from the JNFJ tannery in the UK. And this is a very thick, I wanna say 10 to 12 ounce leather, and it's mostly designated for the Japanese markets. Now this thing, obviously, I've been wearing it hard and it's so resilient, it's barely started to patinate at all so far. It's showing very little signs of wear just because of how thick it is, so thick and hardy. It does have some nice indigo crocking on this side. But yeah, as you can see here, its aesthetic blends very nicely with the boots. Um, and I'll get some outside shots too to show you what that looks like, but yeah, clearly natural tan with the natural rawhides as well as the natural vegetable tan belt are gonna marry up very nicely together. Not to mention the midsole here matches up very nicely to that aesthetic. So that's the first one. I'll also mention that this is double prong um, teardrop eyelets very close together with a raw brass Japanese quick release buckle. Amazing. So this belt is from, this is the Exolution belt from Nobleman's Apothecary. My buddy Angel, this is my first belt from him and it has patinated very nicely so far. This is a natural vegetable tanned leather from Wicket and Craig Tannery and obviously the aesthetic lends itself very nicely to this suede. So we've got tan suede up against natural vegetable tanned, a very nice hairy texture, a very nice hairy nap on this belt here. In my opinion, the, the texture of the belt goes very nicely with, with the aesthetic of those raw hides as well. And actually, I'm gonna be sending this thing into Angel here soon to get um, the X branding all over it because I think it looks really killer cool with that branding on it. So anyways, so these are the two belts that I will be wearing with these boots. I am on Instagram, you can follow me there and you can track how these boots are gonna age and patina over time. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I am on Instagram, you can follow me there. My username is LV. And anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see y'all in my next video.